Good evening, folks, and uh, welcome to our service of Compline on this Wednesday evening. Uh, if you are dialing in using our phone line service, then you're also extremely welcome. Uh, I hope for those that have the internet that you've been availing of the resources and the teaching and the worship um, through New Wine this week. Uh, we made the decision that actually uh, to, to, to sort of dip in to um, that resource um, that is usually only available to those that go to the Sligo Conference every year. Um, so uh, please do that. Don't take this as a week uh, to be off, um, but use it as a week um, to engage in a deeper way in your relationship and your understanding of God's will in your life. Tonight uh, we are uh, doing our compliment at 7.30 so that you can then join in at 8 o'clock um, with the, the teaching from New Wine. Um, so uh, I hope you feel blessed by that. Our service of Compline begins on page 154 of the prayer books. And if you don't have a prayer book, then uh, please uh, look up our website and under the latest resources uh, section, uh, there is um, the services is all available there. Finally, before we begin, um, please be praying for our vestry tonight. Uh, we are going to be meeting as a vestry to make some final decisions regarding reopening uh, our buildings. Quite a lot of work has gone on already. Uh, and now we're at a stage to, to make some final decisions, which we will then uh, notify all of you about uh, in the coming week. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Brethren, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. But thy, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm appointed for this evening's service is Psalm 101. I will sing of faithfulness and justice. To you, O Lord, will I sing. Let me be wise in the way that is perfect. When will you come to me? I will walk with purity of heart within the walls of my house. I will not set before my eyes a counsel that is evil. I abhor the deeds of unfaithfulness, they shall not cling to me. A crooked heart shall depart from me, I will not know a wicked person. One who slanders a neighbour in secret, I will quickly put to silence. Haughty eyes and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. My eyes are upon the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. One who walks in the way that is pure, shall be my servant. There shall not dwell in my house one that practices deceit. One who utters falsehood shall not continue in my sight. Morning by morning will I put to silence all the wicked in the land, to cut off from the city of the Lord all those who practice evil. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The appointed reading for this evening is Matthew chapter 13, beginning at the 10th verse. And the context of this is that Jesus has been teaching, and he's been teaching with, with the use of parables or stories um, that are understood um, in common uh, language. Uh, and so near, near at verse 10, um, the disciples are asking about this. 
Then the disciples came and asked him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, you will indeed listen, but never understand, and you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes so that they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder, have you ever had the opportunity to learn a foreign language? A number of years back, uh, as I was uh, trying to connect more with uh, South American Mission Society, I realized that Spanish would be really important. I'm really not uh, good with languages at all. I went ahead and, and did a course at Queen's for 10 weeks, um, but actually dropped out after about the fifth week because I wasn't keeping up with the work. And lo and behold, after 10 weeks, um, I received a certificate in the post to say that I had completed the Spanish course. Um, I have to say that um, I think I need to go back and even learn the, the, the basics again, but it, it, it's not easy um, to talk a language unless um, you spend time really in the context. You'll learn a lot more about a foreign language if you spend time with people who speak that language to get that sense of the level of, of understanding. You've got to immerse yourself in uh, the culture. You've got to immerse yourself in listening to others who understand that. And Jesus called his disciples and they followed along uh, with him uh, as their teacher, that they immersed themselves in his teaching. They were willing to spend a lot of time and to learn from him constantly. In fact, they spent all of their time with him. They, they left the things behind in order that they could spend time and understand his purposes. Folks, to those who are willing to live fully in God's kingdom, Jesus will then give them the secrets of his kingdom. But all who are not willing to not just turn to Jesus, but to immerse themselves in his teaching, will stand almost like at a football game. They'll stand, they'll spectate, but they're not fully uh, involved and engaged and understand. Do each of us need to press deeper? This is a classic week where each of us can choose to simply watch uh, the Compline service on the Wednesday night because that suits us, but not engage in anything else because it's not Johnny at the front doing the service. Um, are we willing to go further and deeper? Do we need to spend more time listening to what Jesus is trying to say to our hearts? Are we willing to immerse ourselves in what he wants for us. He wants us not just to turn to him and to know his forgiveness, but to live a life that is full of him with nothing else more important than him. This is the only condition for life in his kingdom. And so th these verses where the disciples ask the question about why do they need to hear in the parables? Jesus is giving them 
and the community around the opportunity to understand everything about his kingdom and his will for them. But they've got to immerse in it. They've got to hear it. They've got to want it in, in every part of their lives. And it's 2,000 years later and nothing has changed. Please immerse yourself because there is nothing more important than you, that you can invest in in these days. Amen. We continue with our service at the bottom of page 157. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thy God of truth. We'll now listen to the hymn before the ending of the day. Keep me as the apple of an eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, now let us thy, thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. We affirm our faith now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, <coughs> the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers to be praised and glorified above all forever. 
Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord, guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. In a moment of silent reflection, let us prepare ourselves as we come to confess our sins before a holy God. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, through our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us all of our sins, deliver us from all evil, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to life everlasting, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all of our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will thou not turn again and quicken us, that thy people may rejoice in thee? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come on to thee. Let us pray. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Look down, O Lord, from thy heavenly throne. Illuminate the darkness of this night with thy celestial brightness, and from the children of light banish the deeds of darkness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Visit, we beseech thee, O Lord, our homes, and drive away all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell therein to preserve us in peace, and may thy blessing be upon us evermore, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest, for it is thy Lord only that makest us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Bless and preserve us this night and forevermore. Amen.